it as well. Uh, is that the, also in, in um there's a, there's been a lot of like blackout yeah it's, it's it just not for long hours long. but yeah. you tend to have intermittent that, it's very overnight. annoying that one is it, very it makes annoying it very uncomfortable to yeah see. Mm. yeah yeah in in various places i haven't had it uh maybe for the past two days mm. but before that a yeah. lot of it especially during the day Mm. Especially during I, the I'm day. I'm worried about the night one. You know, the weather is a bit hot, so mm. uh, a bit humid in the evening. Or, yeah. yeah. So uh, it's a bit difficult. But uh, let's ECG. See. Maybe mm. ECG. Well, yeah. MajorOnline.com has a story about that they said they had some gas shortage mm. or something. Okay, so when we get there, we will open it up yeah. And, yeah. and But let's and do share. the daily graphic. Front page of I the graphic. I wanted to tell you I love your hair, by the way. Don't tell me I have to pay for it. Thank you very because much. I know this one is not too expensive. S Nash made my hair. Auntie Sarah did my hair Esh, for me. S Nash. No. S. S Nash. No. Auntie Sarah, you know what I say. <laughs> All right, so uh, Daily Graphic newspaper front page. No tin, no free SHS. Finance mm. Ministry cautions parents. Mm. Cocoa Board CSS in tango over payment to cocoa farmers. Attempt to seal leakage cost. Kumase gas explosion. Hmm. Back page of the paper. Basira Ture breaks Ghana hearts. Uh, we know that yesterday we lost to Mali. Hmm. It was 2-1. We have Cameroon. Cameroon is a very difficult side. Uh, they've been touted as the favorites, really. So, and, and if we have to qualify, I guess we've got to beat them somehow. Uh, Nigeria faced crunch Andy. tie against Zambia. You know Nigeria, they were 2-0, 2-0, 2-0. Like we're extending sports <laughs> so that we can discuss, we can the can discuss women's, yeah. women's And then Nigeria surprisingly lost to South Africa. They've got a second match today. We'll see how that goes. But we need our queens mm. to come through with uh, Cameroon. Otherwise, I'm, I'm not sure. We've been saying host and win, host and win. We can only host and win if we qualify, <laughs> if we get out of the group stage. Yeah. So we'll see how that goes. Yeah. Uh, uh, center spread of the Daily Graphic. Three envoys bit President Kufuado goodbye. The Irish ambassador to Ghana. Uh, there's also the UN resident coordinator. And then there's the Swiss ambassador to Ghana as well. All in the center spread. University is now responsible for sale of colleges of education forms. Also another story in the center spread of the Daily Graphic newspaper. Okay, so let's look at um, the Ghanaian Times. On the front page of the Ghanaian Times, we have gas explosion in Kumasi. Seven suffer severe burns, 27 vehicles destroyed in the process. Oof. Very sad. And um, the story is on page three of the paper. Uh, two month old baby, uh, on the other hand, in jail with mother. Um, I hope that the conditions are good for the mother and child. No, baby should not be in jail. Well, elsewhere, even in the United States, they make provisions for all that. Mm. So, yeah. We're not part of agreement to perform funerals and dannies. And we know this is an ongoing raging issue. There was a press conference. Uh, we're hoping that uh, at least we can delve into it. Maybe subsequent days, take a critical look at the subject. It's been an on past four years. Let's get to the back page. Black Queen stunned by Mali. They were not stunned. I think the Malians were exceptional yesterday, even though the goal, I think, is it the second or the first one? Which was it a penalty? Yeah, it was a, just a... Just Could a, have been avoided. Yeah, I think a draw, a draw would have been yeah, better for I, us. I think the referee maybe... A draw. Well. But also because, you know, Mali also lost their first game, so it mm. had to be a win for them. But the Malians all played some brilliant football mm. yesterday. Yeah, they seemed to know their stuff, stuff their themselves well around the pitch but Cameroon too strong for Algeria mm. so that's six for them that tells you that the women's game on the continent uh, has grown but let's look at the Daily Guide newspaper has on the front page NDC snaps back beams PO at Trade Fair Congress for injured in Kumase gas explosion dismiss cathedral suits attorney general uh, three envoys bid Nana Fairway Metro Mass crash killed six I think what all of us need to stress, especially those in operational activity or work, is to um, work on the safety measures to ensure that uh, some of these things are reduced to the barest minimum. Uh, center spread though, Shatawale booed by UK music fans. I don't. Was it true? Uh, booed? I think that rather. I'm told that uh, 
the event went well. It's when he appeared on a, a program on the on a BBC radio uh, show. But I read this one before you. Okay. <laughs> Maybe okay. Let's go through the headlines because I'm interested in Shatawale as well. I saw something yesterday. I couldn't believe it. I couldn't imagine that it was actually real. That freestyle somewhere be the rap. Charlie, <laughs> <laughs> is there mama and dada in the rap? <laughs> we'll, we'll get into the details of it in the center spread of the Daily Gap. But let's quickly do the Finder newspaper. Front page of the Finder. Dagon crisis end near as agreement is reached to bury two late Yanas. Eminent chiefs present report to president today. Phyllis Osei wins 2018 UN Female Peacekeeping Award. 12 injured in Kumasi LPG station explosion. Ghana to Aldo, its first certified refined gold bar Tuesday, which is today. ADB staff unions oppose ADB NIB merger. Another headline, the Finder newspaper. Uh, let's do the dispatch. Roland, you've done the dispatch already? Uh, I've not done the dispatch yet. Front page of the dispatch newspaper, what we said on November 1st, 2018, 16 days before the NDC national elections. Okay, so the paper is bringing its old headline back. Kwesi Nyantechi speaks about uh, uh, his FIFA ban. Okay, so I guess it's part of the old headline, right? Ghana and Burkina Railway Projects Advisory Services Contract Signed. That's it for the dispatch. Well, so I think... You've done the Ghanaian Times? Yes, I have. Okay. I've done the Ghanaian Times. So, um, want to make a pick? Yeah, I, I want us to talk about this gas explosion. I think you read another headline with some more details in there, maybe the Ghanaian Times, but the... Yeah, so it's uh, yeah. about the number... Uh, you I think reason, you mentioned the, the number of vehicles involved yes, in, uh, in that accident Yes, and then even the number well. of the, the initial victims uh, okay. who have gotten injured now risen to 12. Okay. Even, of course, it's on the front page of mm. uh, the Daily Guide as uh, 3 mm. or 4, but it's rather 12 now as at yesterday evening or night. And, um, well, if you read the story, it also tells you about um, the cause of the explosion yet to be established. But mm. some eyewitnesses said it was caused by a fire from a refuse dump site opposite the gas station. Mm. And basically, it brings to question the sighting of these. Okay. Yes. Yeah. But even if it has to be sighted, because you go to some other countries, they are sighted within residences. There's nothing wrong with it. The thing is making sure that we enforce the safety regulations to ensure that nothing goes untoward. And that is what we don't do well. Mm. Yes. And um, yesterday, uh, we tried to get in touch with the National Petroleum Authority. And they said that um, they have not ascertained the cause of the explosion yet. But even just on the top of my head, um, once the safety issues are not addressed, which uh, could also be akin to some of the factors that may have um, caused the atomic gas explosion, then we should know that wherever they are sighted, could always pose a danger because sure. we don't enforce the regulation yeah. well, as far as whether the valves will be closed, um, whether there's a, any imminent danger close by and what should be done, etc. Uh, for example, we all visit the, the fuel station, the retail stations. We're told not to put on the phone or mm -hmm. use the mobile phone. Mm -hmm. We take it for granted yeah. because the mobile phone, we, we think, uh, is just a device. How possible could it be? But the thing is, work, there's a certain scientific There, there are some the servicemen who will yeah. not serve you. They would insist. Yes. But there are other people who will just look on and let you go. Mm. So I had, a, I had, and I will not mention the station, uh, but I hope that the, the gentleman learned his lesson. Mm. So I was just wrapping up when I got to the station on the phone, and I told the person, well, I'll call you back, I'll call you back. Mm. And then the attendant looked at me and said, oh, we have a bit of a kasawai. <laughs> she understand mm. that. But, you but know, essentially wrong. giving me the go-ahead. But my life is also in danger yes. if I stay on the phone yes. and you're because, filling my because tank. They, if you, if you, the scientific explanation is that this thing emits radioactive waves. And because of that, when they get into some contact with um, the petroleum, then it could spark. Yeah. So uh, you even find that, um, for example, some children are very much aware or some are even not aware. They play with the phones whilst you make entry, if they are in the car, for example, mm. you make entry into the filling station. Mm. So while you, the adult, is conscious, 
uh, that your phone is still in use yes it's still in use by the child mm. and they could have been doing yeah. anything with it Don't i think there are a lot of things that we phone. take for granted yes yeah. it's not only about not talking but even if you're using the internet it's still making the phone active okay you understand okay. so you just have to keep um yeah. it isolated from you and make sure that your children or whoever is around you is not using mm. the mobile phone at the time. Let me read a bit of the angle the Daily Graphic brings on the same issue. It says preliminary investigations into the gas explosion in Kumasi have revealed that the incident occurred when an attendant attempted to seal a leakage while brisk business was ongoing. Ten people got injured in the process while about 30 commercial and private vehicles were bent in the explosion which lasted about an hour. Three of the injured, who are said to be in critical condition, are receiving attention at the emergency units of the Confanochi Teaching Hospital, while three others are on admission at the Tafo Government Hospital in Kumasi. The remaining four have since been treated in this charge. There's an angle of the fire service where they say timely intervention by personnel of the Ghana National Fire Service helped in reducing the effect of the explosion. Now, yesterday when we spoke to two of our guys, Nana Senso Mensa, uh, we spoke to him when the, the, you know, the explosion had just occurred and, and he mentioned that there was a school that shared a war with this gas fuel station and even spoke to uh, the head of the school. But mm. he said they managed to get all the children out of the school. So that's so a good that thing. Was, yeah, that was a good thing, yeah. And, and uh, as far as this is related, uh, the safety issues just um, transcend mm. beyond the premises where we have these gas explosions. Yeah. We have to make sure that um, issues of evacuation mm. and even those residences or adjoining properties and people who may be using those properties or maybe lurking around them. Roland, do hang on. This is not fire service, right? This no. is just residents. Uh, yeah, no, and we're I, bringing you. No, I think that. Well, I, 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 I couldn't have ascertained because okay. what they are using looks. Uh, no, yeah. I, the, you mean the cable? So I think they were helping the fire service to pull it around. No, okay. Mm. But you know, there, there's, yeah, also, the there's also the other issue of how a lot of people gather and they feel that the danger is over. But you may never and, know. And this is a gas. And people just and go there. A, a gas explosion. Mm. Yeah. Again, again, I th again, I think about safety. And the authorities, uh, let's say the fire service personnel, and even the owners of the stations are supposed to make sure that um, they cordon off the place or make mm. sure people don't come close to, close to the place. Because, you know, when the atomic gas explosion happened, um, one of the things that we were told by the fire service was that ideally the stations and the station owners needed to have a, a safety officer, somebody mm. who manages safety on the premises. Uh, do they hire safety officers? I, I think not. The, you need, to, but not, you know, not just our anybody problem, for safety. Our problem, and, and it's sad, is that we resurrect this and we go back to all the basic questions that we ask when an incident occurs. Yes. You know. So we, we've gone to sleep. There's supposed yeah. to have been a report, the atomic gas explosion. We're told that um, they were supposed to have new processes by mm. which they will fill cylinders, etc. Um, the association of the sta their stations, they kicked against it, what, what, what was the alternative that was proposed for them? Was it workable? Has it been implemented since? I know what we'll do with this one. We will set up another committee. We'll put more members on it to no, investigate this, what this happened. One, this one is not serious. So we, only 12 people got injured. So no, nobody will take you it You call serious. this not serious? Well, compared to the top, the thing is that we look at the gravity of the situation. Before we, we, we take action. We, yeah, we, we, we take set serious up the committee. Action. And then it has to be consistent. If this one happens again, happens the next time, perhaps that one will take it more serious. But this one, we'll take it as an isolated incident. And that's troubling. Hmm. And uh, Nana Ansa Obafor of the UK, you know, is a director of communication or more of the communication team of the UK. So it says, I once stopped at Tesco's fuel station to buy fuel and on phone. Immediately, I inserted the pump into the car tank. It ceased to operate. Oh. Immediately, I heard the retail shop attendant through the speaker at the station telling me to switch off my phone. It means that they have a certain safety device mm. that they've uh, installed. And uh, it says um, um, health and safety should be the topmost priority to our people. Daily routine checks 
is a must. It must be enforced. Strictly. Daily routine checks. Just, when this happens, they would go on a march. This explosion is becoming then... one too many. Oh, mm. You are in the UK, so it's easier. You see, well, Tal Ghana, the the whole uh, country. Oh. Like you can, you know, you can. You can tell what is going to happen in the next few days. We will have a group of people say they are um, safety people. Yeah. They are going to check. And they will go from fuel station to... to and then when nobody is watching, they will just go back to sleep again. And yeah, then we'll, exactly. we'll come to this point again. So we, we can foresee what would happen after this explosion. It's a sad one, though. Uh, let's look at other stories uh, in some of the newspapers. Roland, is there anyone Well, anyone yes, I wanted to... Um, comment the, the yes the, 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 there's this story on the front and it's been making the, the round since um, the last 24 hours but I think from the budget um, mm -hmm. period we started getting some of these uh, information about um, the Ministry of Finance using the detour of uh, no fear, no ten no no fear asking yes. parents mm. of those who will be enrolling or already have their children yeah. benefiting from the free SHS but to there were no conditions to to register for their team before they come and I think that's a good way. Um, we want to expand. Is the this for the parent or this is for the child? No, for the parents because you you come with your children. Maybe you come to pay the fees or to enroll. So then they will inquire of you whether you have uh, registered for the TIN, and if you've not, they tell you, go and register. Uh, I think that's a good thing. We have to expand the tax net, so that's a good thing about it. Um, how we're doing it um, also is important. The thing is, those who need to be captured usually would not be the ones that will go to the schools all the time to do the registration. We're talking about the ordinary people who may be semi-literates or illiterates. So, when it comes to sending their children to school, they ask somebody else to do that for them. Either because maybe they don't have the right sort of education and feel that they will need extra help. So government needs to go beyond just um, going through the free SHS. I thought we detail. linked it to the Ghana card. No, no that, that's another one. All, all because, if yeah, everybody, that, that's for the, because if everybody is going to register to get a, a national ID, which everyone no, is interested no. in. The Ghana card, the Ghana card um, is, the registration is based on a certain law. No, I get and, it. And, but don't and, you need a then, tin to be able to register? No, it's not part of the law. No, it's not part of the not law. Part of the law necessarily, but because this is not. No, it's not part of the law. So you don't need. But this is not a law, is it? The, well, there's a law that you should, you should get a tin. But the GRA no, through free its SHS I mean. guidelines is linked to free SHS. No, it's just there's no law. Yeah, so what, what's wrong with saying I mean, that you need a TIN as part of the requirement to, to, to get a Ghana card? Isn't that m much more easier than to link it to free SHS? Yes, that's more, that, that's easier. That's easier than linking it with, to free SHS. But, but this one is also one of the alternatives. Mm. But only this will not give you more numbers like the Ghana card registration would. Um, the, the next point I want to um, have, or maybe talk about, is the fact that, yeah, the team is important, but then we have to ask the questions. Is it that we need, rather, the Ghana, registration, Ghana Revenue Authority have, having its vendors at the schools, so that when the parents come, they register them there, but than rather saying that the parent who has traveled a long distance to come and admit the ward needs to have a team. So mm -hmm. if you go to, let's say, National for a Ghana National or Presec, having traveled from Kofodia in the Eastern region, a parent having traveled to come there, then you tell the parent, please go back and register or go to the nearest. Rather, why don't you have a vendor? Mm. So if I come and I don't have a tin, you generate just, one for me. That's all. Okay. I think that's an alternative. Okay. Then the third question is, is this one replacing the Ghana card? Or is this one rather not going to make the Ghana Identification Authority relax on its oars in How? quickening the pace? to do the registration for the Ghana oh, card. Already, because what you are saying, they passed that stage, Roland. Yes, but, but that's a concern. <laughs> because, you see, we, we wouldn't have gotten here if we had followed the timetable or the schedule for which we need for to the do the ID. registration. You remember the Vice President, Dr. Mahmoud Baumia, in last year, uh, the months within the last year, kept promising it was supposed to be, have been January, February, March, May. It never happened. Even in September, October, it was promised. In 2017, we failed all the timelines until he stopped talk, talking about the timelines. <laughs> Even the National Identification Authority themselves have failed to meet their own timelines. True. So if we had all these ongoing, then what would have happened? 
we wouldn't have so had you, the we, need we have to do the tin. Pockets of things happening. The, initially, when you were talking about the tin, I was a bit confused. I thought it was the Ghana Post GPS. No, no, no. You know, because no, we no, have no. that as well. This one we was the linked tin. to the registration. Yeah. The registration of companies the first time. Mm. So when you go and register, they tell you to have a tin. Yeah. They started that process because yeah. the numbers or the, the, the throughput was high. But it's got to do with. Um, your taxes, filing your taxes and True. all that. And yeah. So it's basically so with the GRE. And how do we, how about a way to link the TIN, the Ghana Post GPS, and the Ghana card? Yes, we can do that. But then I think that we need to have a certain regulation on it. Because right now, this the linkage is not bound by any regulation. Mm. Anybody can challenge it. For example, if I send my child to get an admission the next year for free SHS. And you insist or that if I don't have a TIN, I, I can't can register? Yeah, of course. Somebody can just frustrate the process, yeah. the policy implementation in itself. And so we need to do the re regularization of the policies with the law, get the proper backing. I think that's the best way that government could be safe. On the other hand, the last point, we seem to be registering too many people <laughs> with too many bio data. Mm. Within the last two, three years, SNIT has called all its registration or those that have uh, on their database mm. to come and regularize themselves with mm. the bio data registration. Yeah. I have even They've even there. gone to companies I, I to set up. Mm. It has this uh, SIM or something like that on it, some GP, something, something that could be recognized on it. Mm. Some nice yellow thing I have in my wallet. I don't use it in yeah. any way. Yeah. Uh, they, they provide. Now, even the National Health Insurance I think they even said you card. could use as ATM or something. We have the, but we're No, you can it. access it through some kind of Have uh, you tried automated. it? I've never done it. Yeah, I have I've tried it works? It to check my, my Does details. it work? So, yes, it does okay. work. It does work. Uh, two, the National Health Insurance Authority registered mm. people for the National Health Insurance Scheme. Mm. Even the banks register people. They, let, they, they allow you to... There's also some, the passport office. Yeah. Pe people register. A lot of Re we, we seem to be registering rough, 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 <laughs> rough, 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 rough. <laughs> so why is it that we don't just aggregate all these onto one Consolidation. platform? That is what the Ghana card was supposed to do. Consolidation. And I feel that we failed in that regard. Yeah. I Look, think we're still tin, running tin around. Tin is nice. So what happens if the Ghana card, uh, Ghana card comes on stream? We already have a tin. So it means that the, all the money we wasted on the tin is pure taxpayers' money gone waste. Because people will be paid just to sit doing tin registration. Yeah. Tin registration. Yeah. While the Remember, there's, a, there's, there's another team, we're told, that's also going around to generate the GPS uh, for Address people. Address for people. Exactly. So, yeah, that's, huh. that's where we, we are. We need to harmonize. Mm. They call it harmonize. But recently, we've learned consolidation. We've learned with the yeah, banks. I know, GIA, Bad, Bad Bad Bad. Everything is being consolidated. <laughs> yeah, you remember. <laughs> but, but the, but, the but, one but the thing GIJ, that is most important when not. I, I think I love some of the consolidation activities. GIJ, NAFTI, and I think the also. Institute of Languages I think that's cool. being merged. That's cool. But it's national now. Why is this still not Ghana? No, they haven't named the institution yet. No, there's a name. Yesterday I saw a name. No, it was no, national. Now people are. It's. Um, I think it's the press or the. Oh really? Yeah, the media that's oh, trying to okay. find the. All right. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I think we have a bit of time to go online, but let's talk about this woman. Page five. The. Uh, this is the final newspaper. The annual United Nations Female Police Officer of the Year Award, formerly known as the International Female Police Peacekeeping Award, was presented during a ceremony co-hosted by the United Nations Police Division of the Department of Peacekeeping Operations and the Permanent Mission of Canada to the United Nations. And this year award went to UN Police Officer Chief Superintendent of Police, Ms. Phyllis Ama. Teboa Osei from the United Nations Mission in Somalia. And we've been really proud, I think, coming on the back of... Remember, some police officers went to... Uh, was it Sudan? Mm. About 47 of them. Hmm. And they were brought back. We are investigating them in Ghana, even though they've been investigated there. And, the, you know, some sexual misconduct charges slapped against them. Uh, but to, to realize that, that there's, there's one woman, you know, who's too tall... Uh, Phyllis, uh, we want to celebrate her today. Phyllis Ama Teboa, from the, the United Nations Mission in Somalia. Yeah, but in which of the forces is she? Is there a force? Um, is it Ghana 
Is it the military or? No, no, this is police. Police, okay. Yeah. That's a good uh, She's a superintendent of police from the Ghana Police Service, mm. and she was selected for the award as her policing work directly and positively impacted okay. in uh, the community and the host state police in Jubaland in Somalia. Let's keep her in our prayers as well, because yeah. Somalia is uh, such an unstable place, uh, you know, to work. So to, be, to work there and to be outstanding, that's really positive. Yeah, I have a former colleague who works around that, uh, yeah. that part of... Uh, the, is one of the... Um, um, Gifty Bingley, Gifty Ose Bwachi Bingley. But she was in Kenya? Yeah. Somalia? She, yeah, w works with um, the AU and so yeah. goes around Charlie Somalia, is, Ethiopia... Is, is brave to, Eritrea, to accept yeah, an appointment to and, work in, in a place like that. And we say congratulations. In I mean, Sudan, um, Somalia. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Actually, you should. All well, right. I, I have a message from Akilu who is with uh, the Fatiakwa North communication team of the NDC. He's actually a deputy communication officer. Uh, we just met at the last... Um, number of them took my number, so I'm sure they'll be sending me more messages. So he says, Roland, who, who, who is in charge with the responsibilities? Um, and you are talking in relation to the gas explosion. He says that the MPA should be held responsible for all these gas explosions. They allow these filling station owners to establish them. And then on the parts of um, widening the tax net, he says, if government wants to widen the tax net, it is simple. We have photocopy of foreign education systems in Ghana here. That's free SHS finance ministry. Well, mm. you know, that, this reminds me, uh, you know, there are some of the inspectors, some of the people who are supposed to go to these outlets to inspect. And sometimes when they do the job, because there's a, there's a true story of, of a gentleman who, who went to inspect one of these outlets and found that there were some safety things that had not been put in place and he looked at the regulation went accordingly and said i am closing you down for this period you know that the owner of, of the fuel station tried to give him money which he he said no he wasn't going to take and then the man apparently knew somebody at the top somewhere so he so you see, the person working on the ground is doing the, the right thing, but one man at the top calls and says, um, um, you go and open the, the station. You know, what does this say to the, to the gentleman who is on the ground who is doing his work? Because, you know, you get your boss in Accra calls you and says, go and open the, the, go and open the fuel station. The owner of the fuel station will laugh at you yeah. because you are so insignificant, you're so powerless, you can't even enforce anything. So it, it works in various angles and we have to look at all that so let's do my jawline.com mm. real quick before mm. we make way for benedict with sports with that heartbreaking story uh, of uh, mali whipping us 2-1 in the women's game my joyonline.com right now and the 17 charlie that's the thing oh ghana top group thanks to abdullah brace it's almost like we want the maidens to come and play this one for us they're doing amazing, and they well, took the yeah, this is but, the, but, but this is senior. You, the you, FIFA and the seventeen. You look at the type of football Cup that the queens are playing, there. or the senior, yeah. the seniors are playing, Charlie. <laughs> okay, uh, Ghanaian entrepreneur gets Glow BC Award for commitment to business excellence. Six perish in Gori Techiman Sunyai Road accidents. Why Ghana is not good for Kweku Adoboli and how he can cope. It's a feature. Uh, there are some photos. Uh, sat hosting day two. Take a trip back to history of mankind. Government to complete measure of ADB NIB by December 31. Lecturers without PhDs will soon not teach in Ghana's universities, according to the education minister. Ghana's Phyllis Osei, that's the woman we talked about a while ago, is 2018's UN female police officer. Yeah. Yeah, we're proud. Uh, Manson Quanta Killens investigates committee criticized for limited scope. There are a lot more stories on myjoyonline.com this day that, you know, you can log on and read roland you have a message yeah uh don't have a message really. okay do, no. okay yeah we so can't. but i want to say uh, oh, a good morning to no. a, a great friend of mine no. kojo to four menu okay ben good morning to you kojo to four menu is new on the list 
No, it's not. Oh. Only that I don't mention him. Oh, okay. He doesn't right. like the mentions. Oh, okay. Today I just want to say good morning to you. <laughs> uh, you're going to work. <laughs> well, time. stay with us. Benedict comes up next. And I tell you what, uh, I saw the Black Queens mm. uh, when I visited them on Friday. And they all are active on their phones. They've got their phones. You get it. My point is, let's not criticize them too much. You know, be a bit sensitive because they follow the news. And let's still give them the support. We say that Cameroon is a very difficult side, but who knows? We could just win that game. Uh, so sports is coming up next. That's I don't curious. know if Benedict can top that for us. Yeah. So and Benedict <laughs> is uh, joining me. Uh, we'll have some conversation. You want yeah, him to come? Later on. No, it's, it's fine. You can have that conversation. Okay. So stay with but us. But you are speaking to? The British High Commissioner. Uh, we're doing a follow-up uh, to the Prince's visit. You know, Prince Charles and Camilla came to visit Ghana. Uh, I wonder how much of an advantage what what we took out of that visit, but we want to measure uh, where the relationship is today after that visit. Uh, where are we going next? So yes, we do have a conversation with the mm. um, UK. Yeah, High Commissioner. Commissioner Ian Walker. Yeah. So stay with us. We'll bring you all that and more here on the show.